first of all, I want to thank uh, Mr. Uh, Tahir Sharif, uh, former uh, Secretary General at the Egyptian and British Chamber of Commerce and uh, well-known economist. Uh, thank you, sir, for joining us today with uh, Media in Toronto, me and my, and the owner and founder of Media in Toronto, uh, Saeed, and myself, uh, uh, Editor-in-Chief of Media in Toronto, Shadi Salah. Thank you, Mr. Tahir, for joining us today. Okay, thank you, Shadi. Thank you, Saeed, for having me on on this interesting uh, chat uh, about the latest developments in Canada after the uh, the general elections, which took place just lately over the past two days. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, you know, um, as every as everyone knows that uh, you know, I, I can read. I can read that the. Uh, the Canadian people are really for you know, stability. By re-electing uh, uh, Theodore and the Theodore. Liberals, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, uh, and the Liberals, uh, uh, you know, <clears throat> even with uh, a little minority, I would say that the, uh, the Canadian people are willing uh, uh, and shooting for uh, everlasting stability. Uh, and it seems to me that, and uh, this is uh, also everybody can read that, uh, you know, uh, uh, that the liberals have done uh, a good job over the past uh, few years, ever since they came to power. In the meantime, uh, uh, you know, uh, they have handled the, uh, the, uh, the pandemic uh, crisis, you know, uh, uh, as good as uh, all the Western people. Okay, so uh, let me let me tell you something that um, the nature of the Canadian uh, policies, and uh, you, you 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 may know better than I do. But despite uh, the 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 Catholic marriage between the United States and Canada, but Canada is keeping her identity and his her her liberal. Uh, uh, function of economy, politics, and all the strategic issues. Uh, John, uh, the, the Canada is known as a country without agenda. That's that's Canada which we know. Uh, ever since they, you know, they started their economic life and uh, their social life, and if ever since they were established as a, a, a sovereign country. It's a, it's a country without agenda. Uh, the main interest of Canada is to, uh, I mean, to uh, promote its, uh, its uh, economic, uh, economic status, economic uh, interest, and keep uh, its uh, relationship as good as uh, it should be with all uh, uh, its counterparts and partners all around the world. We have never seen uh, Canada intervening in strategic issues with any of uh, uh, the uh, Middle East or any of the European or Asian. Then they keep a distance between, you know, away from any any disputes or any, uh, uh, I would say, conflicts, whether it's strategic or military uh, conflicts. Uh, you know, unless there is a, a fair case or a fair uh, uh, I would say uh, a, a fair battle, uh, uh, just uh, just like the one that happened in Kuwait during Saddam Hussein, uh, the Gulf, the first Gulf War. Uh, Canada is uh, one of the greatest uh, seven uh, industrial countries. You know, it's a, G, a member of the G7, and its economy is very much diversified, especially industry and agriculture and you know whatever uh, you know whatever i mean uh, worldly problems or worldly uh, uh, let's say uh, uh, downward or any of those uh, i mean uh, worldly crises canada is very vulnerable to those crises and its economy is affected ups and downs according to those worldly uh, uh, changes. 
okay, especially, as I said, the, uh, the, the industry. And, uh, uh, you know, the latest figure that uh, uh, Canada uh, industry lost about 1.5% uh, uh, of uh, its uh, growth uh, interpreted to about 60 billion US dollar, sorry, not US dollar, maybe it's a Canadian dollar, but uh, the, if you look at the lumber industry, the, the wood industry itself, it's retreated by 22%, which is a huge, it's a huge uh, setback of this industry. And uh, it's, uh, they found out that about 12 major industries lost, uh, uh, has lost the growth and retreated over the past, uh, past year. And all the figures of July 2021 show that there is a tremendous loss for the, uh, for the industry of Canada, uh, especially in the in the metallurgical industry, in the automobile industry, and the heavy, heavy industries at large. Uh, the question here is that uh, uh, does Canada and the new government looking for an alternative, uh, uh, I mean, way of economy or a source of uh, regenerating and revitalization uh, the economy? Uh, just like any other countries like in Europe, when they diverted to real estate uh, industry, diverted to some uh, service industries. Uh, um, I'm not sure that Canada or the government itself can do it uh, on, uh, on its own because there are so many pressure groups, mainly the uh, M... Uh, yeah, 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 M, M, um, uh, C, 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 M and uh, C, M and E, you know, the C, M, E, uh, which is the uh, Canada manufacturers uh, and uh, exporters. It's a, a very powerful pressure group. And this group stand, stands next to uh, Trudeau and, his, uh, and the liberals against the, uh, the conservatives. And uh, they were very much supporting uh, Trudeau and his government or the new government uh, uh, within uh, the, the the latest uh, uh, latest election, so I'm not sure that uh, uh, th those pressure groups will let Trudeau and his group to give less priority to the industry and to exports vis-a-vis huh? uh, -vis going to some alternative uh, uh, economic activities like the real estate and other services, which can generate income or national income and increase and, and boost the, uh, you know, the, uh, the GDP of Canada, but not uh, uh, on sustainable, uh, sustainable case or sustainable manner, but it will be, uh, I would say, temporary booster to the uh, uh, Canadian uh, Canadian uh, economy. So the industry and agriculture will remain the main two pillars of Canada and nobody could touch those, uh, 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 those sectors by uh, overlapping or by, uh, you know, uh, 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 going to other uh, economic activities rather than industry and agriculture. Uh, uh, you know, as, as I said, that uh, the, CM, uh, the uh, uh, CME, uh, which is the Canada uh, manufacturers and uh, exporters, uh, it's, it's a huge uh, uh, and uh, effective, influential uh, pressure group. And I'm sure that uh, Trudeau and his, uh, uh, and his government will listen to them to the uh, face and to the sake of the Canadian economy. Uh, but Mr. if Dan, you ask uh, me... Uh, I just want to uh, ask you something here. Oh. Um, during the past, uh, like, 15, 16 months um, to oh. tackle the pandemic, uh, the Liberals um, ran up. This is the main issue here in Canada and was the main issue 
during the last elections, during the last uh, uh, campaign, mm -hmm. saying that the, the critics, I mean, the liberals run up a record national debit of like one trillion dollar and pushed the budget deficit uh, to high not seen since World War II. Uh, oh yeah. How, how can how can this minority government like stop uh, or tackle that problem? Are they gonna like an I, I, I want your opinion as an economist. Are you yeah. go, going to, to uh, are they going to uh, hold, hold the spending, stop the spending spree, or making cuts, obligatory okay. cuts? Okay, okay. Let me touch on this. You know, uh, the, 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 the national debt or the national, uh, I mean, balance of, of payment uh, deficit. It's, it's not only Canada in the world. Canada is one of the uh, one of the one of, of of the many countries among the whole universe that they, they have suffered uh, from the pandemic. And uh, most of them, the most of those uh, economies started to borrow uh, monies and borrow foreign exchange, uh, but. Now, the question is, which I don't have the answer so far, is that national debt, external debt or domestic debt? If it's domestic debt, then the problem is not that severe. If it's an external debt, then the problem would start. So now maybe the government knows better than, than, than I do and, they, and than you do that how much the portion of or between the national uh, external debt and the national internal debt. But I'm sure since I was dealing with the Canadians, they, the government always tries to cover the internal deficit by internal debts from banks and from uh, financial institutions. This is the question. Now the, you ask the question if what, what's going to happen? What Canada should do to tackle and to remedy such a situation, just like other countries which are doing that? If you look at Europe, Germany, uh, the United Kingdom, France, the United States, China, and all those big Japan, for instance, now they're all suffering and they are trying to get out of this bottleneck. The bottleneck is really tightening all the economies, economies of the seven, uh, the, uh, of the G7 countries. Now, if you ask me, as a humble person, and you ask me if I were, if I were in the shoes of the Canadian decision maker, what should I do to get out of this? This, I mean, uh, I would say this dilemma. It's economic dilemma. As a Canadian government, I would recommend the following. You know, the Canadian market is limited. How many consumers do you, ha you have? About 30 million consumers or 35 40 million? million. Huh? 40 million, uh, around 40 million. Yeah. It's a, it's a, it's a rather, rather uh, minor uh, consuming uh, market. Uh, compared to the immense and the huge amount of uh, the Canadian production of uh, uh, industrial pro pro uh, production, uh, uh, of uh, agricultural production, energy production, service productions, and so on and so forth. So there is, there is a surplus, a huge surplus uh, of that production, okay, compared to the size of the Canadian uh, Canadian nation. So then what, 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 how can I get out of this dilemma? Number one, you have to fight hardly and severely to, to enlarge your international markets. So, so you can market your excess products, excess services, whether industrial, 
or or or, or, or agriculture or whatever. But what I can see is Canada is not doing its homework to go out and to to market itself to sell the pro, the Canadian market everywhere in the world. If you look at China, and just let me know one single household does not have a Chinese product, starting from a watch or a car or a carpet or, or whatever. Chinese product now is everywhere in the world. What did Canada do to market itself and to go out to the international markets uh, to sell more and to produce more? But it seems to me that Canada, I mean, said it to itself, you know, the American market is a very close neighboring market and it's very easy for me uh, just to cross the, the borders and sell my product. This is a very stupid and idiot understanding or thinking. So they have to go across the oceans. Right? They have to go to the Middle East. They have to go to the Arab world, Africa, the European markets, and so on and so forth. But Mr. it seems to me that the Canadians do not do their homework properly. Mr. Okay. Tahar, uh, yeah. let me let me take your uh, your your last quote and and follow up uh, uh, because today is September twenty third. Uh, the election was uh, results was on September twenty first, and uh, and uh, and we are following uh, nowadays the uh, the, um, uh, the the assembly uh, the United Nations General Assembly at the same time. The Prime Minister of the uh, United K Kingdom uh, has a bilateral uh, uh, meeting with the President Biden, and he uh, just asked uh, to join the US MCA uh, agreement. And uh, three hours ago, we had a quote uh, from the Mexico president uh, about uh, this, uh, this uh, request. Uh, but uh, what's your thought about uh, uh, this, uh, this yeah. news? And how Canada should react faster? Said you are reading my mind, Said. And uh, your talk now is music in my ears, OK? So, but anyway, uh, uh, this is my next point, that I have to work hard to join that block, the <clears throat> North American block, and not, not me, not, not, not the, the, the Canada. The Canada rule, the Canada rule in that block is minor. That's exactly what I, what I can see. But the major role is played by the United States vis-a-vis -vis Mexico. Okay? And the Mexicans and the Americans are very active in this area. Okay? Where is Canada? I don't hear the Canadian voice at all. The loud voice is coming from the States and coming from Mexico. What about if Canada goes to Mexico and intensify its trade relations and export more? You know why? Not because of the uh, Mexican markets, huh? but because the Mexicans have so many bilateral trades with Latin America and South America. Mm -hmm. And through, and this Mexico could be a good window huh? through the Latin America and through. South America, okay? If they can, I mean, use the tripartite, tripartite deals, Canada, Mexico, and, uh, and Latin America or South America. So this is one of the uh, areas that they can play a, a major role. They, they can have really a, a big chunk of the cake out of that Mexican. And the, the Mexican economy, as you may know, is depending mainly on the Latin American and the uh, uh, and South African uh, South American market. So that could be one of the uh, solutions and one of the uh, uh, go out of this dilemma. Uh, uh, the other thing is that uh, uh, Canada has to reconsider its production cost. It's uh, bearing in mind that Canada is uh, at the other side of the, the whole world. 
you know, it's far away from the central markets in Europe, Africa, and Central Asia. So Canada has to reconsider its production cost and to give some incentives to the producers and manufacturers to, uh, uh, to, to produce a good quality at a reasonable price, reasonable cost. You know, I'm not talking about, I'm not asking for losing uh, benefits or losing revenues, but to reconsider the cost of production of uh, Canadian gas, uh, taking into consideration the distance and the freight cost between the central markets and the Canadian, uh, Canadian uh, country. Okay, the other thing is Canada is, uh, has many of those what you call comparative advantage in the education, R&D, okay? So they have to intensify the R&D to produce new models of services, new models of products, okay? To suit the development of the world, whether in the developing countries or the developed countries. Look at China, what China did. They are producing the perfect product for the perfect people. Okay. But uh, Mr. Taher, what I can see now that uh, the, uh, the United Kingdom are trying to divert their resources and going uh, maybe to do the tripartite uh, agreement with uh, with Mexico and the US MCA. Uh, is it uh, what's the advantage uh, for Canada uh, on, on with this? Uh, uh, could be uh, this agreement yeah, yeah. Uh, and to extend it and to, uh, to to the United Kingdom. And I need also your thought of um, what we mentioned in the early, the first interview on using the tripartite uh, agreement and uh, yeah. and as an as uh, and to generate uh, the source from Egypt as mm -hmm. as a country. So now we have a big competition between two countries. Uh, uh, Mexico. It looks, like, Saeed, it looks like you were sitting next to me when I wrote this point because it's my next point. Okay. okay. <laughs> it's my next point, uh, as a matter of fact. Okay. So, uh, Britain, Britain, and the US has started uh, these negotiations uh, to join the free trade agreement with that bloc or bilaterally with the United States. However, uh, that was during uh, during um, um, uh, the ex uh, the uh, the former president uh, uh, president uh, Trump. Okay, but it's not new to the British. That's why the the uh, yeah, you know Boris Johnson, the Prime Minister of the United Kingdom, now is sitting in Washington or New York, you know, uh, uh, shoulder to shoulder and back to back with the United States and I'm sure with the Mexican as well, uh, to finalize the draft, uh, uh, I mean, collateral agreement. <laughs> you know, it's, there is a collateral should be involved. If I, if I give you this, what you are giving me, what you are, giving, what you are going to give, give me in the future or right now, if I give you a piece of, uh, uh, of, of our, uh, uh, big market, what you are getting gives me in the United Kingdom market. So now they are doing some negotiations to see where they can meet uh, in the middle. Now, Mexico, Mexico, uh, if I were the prime minister of Mexico, I would urge the United Kingdom and the United States and Canada to sign the agreement as soon as possible. Okay. Mexico will have uh, will have a heavy leg in the United Kingdom and then in, uh, the, in Europe at large if they signed that agreement with the United Kingdom. So, uh, and also the Canadian, the Canadians will have a share, but unfortunately the smallest share of the cake will be for the Canadian. Don't ask me why, but from the, our experience, the past experience uh, within uh, over the few de last decades, Canada is always sitting in the shade, sitting in the shade, waiting for the very small portions of those those things. So, 
Canada has to rush. Canada has to, I mean, interfere. Canada has, uh, Canada has to crush those uh, <clears throat> negotiations to have a bigger share and substantial uh, profit and benefit from that agreement. But believe it or not, Boris Johnson will never come back, will never come back in London unless he signed at least a draft, a draft or put his initials on a draft of uh, a prerequisite agreement, okay? Uh, but, uh, you know, for, for Canada, I'm, I'm, I'm just advising uh, the, that, that, that the government, the new government, to rush and push, not just to wait for the little, uh, the little things uh, and the leftovers of, the, uh, uh, of that agreement. Okay, uh, uh, Canada also has to learn from the Chinese uh, Chinese experience. Uh, the, uh, China, China is everywhere now, as I said. Why mm -hmm. why doesn't Canada go and see where is China and they can they can insert their their their, their trade issues wherever Canada wherever China is, Canada. Uh, will never survive unless they go out of out the borders. Mm -hmm. But it seems to me that can, the Canadians are very much humbly satisfied with the local market and the U.S. market. This that, is and that would be a, a, a huge, a huge problem for uh, that uh, minority government and a huge problem for those who are trying to um, fix. Uh, the economy. Uh, yes, right? yes, yes. That's that's correct. Also, one of my advices, if I'm a place to advise, that the Canadian government and the new government should look look into uh, a bundle of incentives to be presented to foreign investors mm -hmm. and local investors, European investors, Mexican investors and to look into or to reconsider the tax policy. If you give me an incentive, you know, I will come, I will rush and make, make advantage of those uh, uh, incentives and uh, incentives like, uh, for instance, as I said, tax, in tax uh, uh, incentives or uh, free land or, uh, 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 I mean, you know, th there are many, there are many, there are many, uh, attractive elements could be formulated in a bundle to be presented to foreign investors as well as local investors. Could okay. be American investors, could be a Mexican investor, could be British investors, could be a Chinese investor. So Canada has ab abundant resources, whether land, uh, underground, overground, everywhere, but, and they have endless resources uh, that can be used to attract more investors. Mr. Last thing, last thing, uh, Saeed, last yes. thing. Uh, <clears throat> uh, why not Canada to see where it's uh, comparative advantages? Comparative advantages like in, the, in, like in education, like in education, like in R&D, like in uh, agriculture, like in lumbering and all those things and call for investors to come. Call for investors, wherever they are, to come and work freely and invest freely in this until they come out of this bottleneck because the bottleneck is severe. The bottleneck is not that easy. And if Canada stays home and nesting without doing anything, nesting at home without doing anything, and they say, political stability is a major issue of our people. No, it will impact on the man in the street or it will impact on the major, the, the, the economy at large. They have to do their homework and they have to go out of their borders. Mr. Those are Taher, some points that I would recommend to thank the you. Canadian government. Yeah, Mr. Taher, uh, thank you uh, for your uh, brief, uh, short, uh, quick uh, uh, wrap up uh, and, and updates for the Canadian economy and the Canadian reaction 
Uh, and I think that this is a, a, a good talk within the series of our adaptation uh, web series that we are doing. Definitely, we'll get back to you uh, after uh, the U.S., uh, the United States, the United Nations Assembly, and uh, uh, the Boris Johnson visit and request. Okay, pleasure, Said. Pleasure. Thank you so much, Thank Mr. Mr. Fahir. Uh, 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 the former. It will be my privilege to be with you any time to talk about the Canadian policies because Canada is very dear to me, by the way. Uh, Mr. Tahir Sharif, uh, former Secretary General uh, of the Egyptian British Chamber of Commerce and the famous uh, economist. Thank you, sir, for joining us today. And uh, it was a pleasure. And also, we thank you, Saeed. Uh, uh, and uh, we will hope uh, to meet again soon.